Hello, hello. This is Tara with the Painted Cicada. Welcome. Tonight we are going to do uh, just a quick demo of a painted deer. Um, there's no tracer for this one. I'll just walk you through how to draw it. Um, and I didn't list paint colors because they're pretty flexible. Um, as far as the background, I'm going to use uh, shades of blue for my background. Of course, you can choose whatever background color that you might like. Uh, I am um, making a deer, so I've got kind of a burnt sienna brown uh, deer color, and then I'll be using white, of course, for parts of the deer and to mix. Um, I've also got black working with some butterflies. So I've got orange as well, but of course you can make butterflies any color. So the colors for this, super flexible. Um, use what you have, use what you love. Uh, and as far as drawing this guy, I'm gonna walk you through how to draw this deer step by step. So this is just a fun, whimsical painting. There is definitely um, no pressure to be, uh, super realistic with this guy. I see people hopping on. If you are joining me this evening, uh, I am using StreamYard. So if you have not done so, please give StreamYard permission uh, to see your name so that I know who you are. Say hello. Let me know if you're painting along with me. Uh, if not, it's perfectly okay to watch and then paint on your own. All right, so for our little summer deer, this is actually, I guess it's a, a fawn, a uh, baby deer. I don't know. I don't know my animals real well. Um, animal names real well, I guess. Anyway, let me take down this banner. Do, do, do. All right, so let's get started. Uh, I'm working in an art journal here. I like to work in a journal. Um, this one's just mixed media paper because I create a lot of paintings. Uh, so I'm going to draw this guy. And what I'm going to do is kind of about halfway up my page and halfway, I'm going to find my center mark just to give me some perspective. And just slightly up and to the right of center is where I want to draw this guy's head. And uh, the shape of the head, uh, again, I'm not going super realistic, but um, it's kind of the shape of an upside down egg. So up at the top, we've kind of got a curve. And then I just bring it down to a rolling point there. So nothing too difficult. Uh, and then I'm going to make him some big old ears. And I want his ears to be about the same size as his head on each side. Uh, so just visualize kind of uh, the same size head. And then what you can do is just kind of find your center and then just go up and out, up, out and around. Same thing here, gonna find that center. And so until we fill him in, he's gonna look kind of goofy and that's okay. Now I want his body, uh, again, this is kind of uh, representational, not super realistic. Uh, so his body is gonna fade out into the background. But I want his body to be about twice the length of his head. And so on either side here, I just, I'm going to make some lines for his neck. And I'm going to keep this pretty narrow. This is going to be kind of his uh, chest area here. And then I'm going to add some width to it. So this will be uh, kind of where his shoulders come out. And then on the other side, I'm going to uh, stretch out that neck a little bit and then curve around to the back of his body. 
Now this doesn't look very deer like now, but I promise you when we get to the end, he will look like a deer once we add color and all that good stuff. Um, I am gonna go back up to his face. Let's add in his little square nose. Deer have kind of a square nose there. And a little mouth off to the sides. And then we need to add in some eyes. So about halfway between the nose and the top of his head, I'm gonna find my halfway. I am going to draw in his eyes. Now what I like to do with those is just kind of a high arch and that'll be the top. Like here's his little eyelashes, right? And then I'll just curve them down underneath. Now he looks super creepy. He's not going to be super creepy at the end, I promise. Um, like here's his little tail over there. Uh, and I've got some butterflies flying around. So I make really simple butterflies. Again, right now these are kind of placeholders. Uh, but for my butterflies, if they are following me straight on, I make a T. And then that helps me kind of keep things even on both sides. I've got one sideways guy over here. And then a wing in the back. Did the same thing over here. A lot of this is going to get covered with paint, so I'm not too worried about being perfect. I'm just making my placeholders. And your butterflies can be all different sizes, facing different directions, whatever is easiest for you. All right, so I've got this guy sketched out. Um, I hope that wasn't too difficult. He's pretty easy to manage there. And now I'm gonna get my background color put on my paper. So I mentioned I'm gonna use blue. I've got a nice cobalt blue. Any color will work for the background for sure. And I'm going to put in some white and then I'm also going to dab in some aqua. But my primary color is going to be blue. And because I'm working with the background, I'm going to use a nice big brush. And I'm going to kind of just make a big circle around this guy. Everything out here on the edge of the circle, I'm going to keep nice and pure blue. Just a nice bright color. And I intentionally drew this guy with the Sharpie so I'd be able to see these lines through my paint ever so slightly. If you did not do that, don't be afraid just to go around that, that outline. All right, and as I work my way in here, I'm gonna tap in some white. I just kind of wanna blend this in just ever so light on the inside. I don't need a ton of white, but I want the color just to be a little bit different, you know? So I'm just blending that blue out. And I go over my edges because I don't want there to be a halo around those edges. So I don't mind a more painterly background, 
but I don't want it to be weird around my deer. Lights reflecting a little bit there, but I think you can see he's just a little lighter towards the inside, and that's kind of optional. You definitely don't have to do that. Really, just a solid background color is just as good for that part. And then once I get my blue all over, what I'm going to do now is get a smaller brush. Um, I'm going to keep with the square shape and I'm going to dip into my aqua green. This is kind of like a teal color and I'm just going to add in some brush strokes with this green. And then I'm going to mix some of that aqua green with my leftover blue and kind of blend it out a little bit. The green is just there for highlight and fun and just to vary the background a little bit. Even add a little more white light in that blue, just for a little, little zhuzh. Every time I paint, I do something a little different. So there's no right and wrong. We're just adding some fun and color and movement in that background. And I kind of follow the shape of that circle. But you don't have to. You could go up and down. You could go left to right. Whatever feels right. I definitely like to just jump in there and do it. Whatever happens, happens. I'm not trying to paint really hyper-realistic today, so have fun. There we go. So it's just kind of a swirly whirly blue background with a little bit of a little bit of texture in there. Um, this is something if you enjoy it, you could even use a palette knife um, to add some color and in, in fun back there. And I'll just kind of show you what that looks like. So yeah, don't be afraid to just experiment. Use what you have, use what you love. Uh, make it your own. So when I do these demos and tutorials, I really just uh, I'm trying to give you some inspiration with the subject and I want you to kind of take it from there. So this is what it would look like with a palette knife. So I am switching up my game plan a little bit and that is okay. So there's no right or wrong, whether you use a palette knife, whether you use paintbrush, just get some color and move them all in there. It shouldn't take entirely too long for this background to dry, but I am going to switch over to the deer. And for this guy's body, I need some brown. And I'm going to use the burnt sienna right out of the tube to start. I might thin it slightly, um, but I'm not going to alter that color. So this guy's body is going to be mostly burnt sienna. I'm going to use a square brush, flat brush, 
And uh, what I'm gonna paint in is his body here. I'm gonna leave this uh, white, that's going to be a white section. So his shoulders and his head and the center of his ears. So that's the part, the center I didn't draw, but you can easily just follow kind of the, the inside of your outline. So all those parts I want to be burnt sienna. And what I'm gonna do here for his body is where I want it to kind of taper off, I'm just gonna pull down until those brush strokes cover the white and end up in the blue. So he's just going to kind of fall off the bottom here. So I just start pulling at the top and then kind of gently lift once I hit that blue. So I want to see the brush strokes lighten and just kind of feather out down there at the bottom. And then I will do the same thing kind of on the side here ever so lightly. Right now I'm just blocking in color. So nice burnt sienna ears. These are just the center of the ears. We'll mix in white around the edges. And then a majority of his face is burnt sienna. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the whole thing. I'm gonna leave the eyes just so I don't have to redraw them. And yes, this guy still looks kind of creepy. But as we layer, he will get cuter and cuter. While I'm working, I did leave a little bit of that blue. Oh. I did not quite go over far enough with that background color. So I'm just filling that in. I said to make sure you go over your edges, but did I do it? Nope. All right. So just fixing that. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to mix white with just the tiniest pinch of burnt sienna. Um, so I wanna make a creamy color. So I'm pulling over my white and I'm gonna mix this into a really light cream. And so for now, what I'm gonna do with that light cream is I'm gonna do the edges of the ears. Once I'm happy with those edges, I'm just going to kind of tap in some of this light cream here. Uh, I'm going to bring it onto his face, maybe around his eyes a little bit. We're going to blend some of these colors out, but I definitely want some variation in there. And then kind of around this white edge here. I'm just tapping it in. I'm not worried about this being a super clean line or anything specific like that. I'm just adding in color so when I grab that white later, uh, it's gonna blend out. So, yeah. And now I'm gonna add a little more burnt sienna. I'm gonna darken that up. And then I can kind of just tap this in. 
a little darker color. So to tone down that lightness a little bit. And then I'll dip right back into my burnt sienna and just kind of cover some of this up, blend it out, smush it around. So we've added just a little bit of kind of furry texture by doing that. All right, now I need to grab a little bit more white. I used up all my white. All right, so now uh, I'm going to dip into the white. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off. I almost want a dry brush technique this. So I'm in my white, wipe it off, and I'm just going to kind of add in Just the tiny bit of white around that ear. But what I'm doing is I'm adding the white onto my brush and then wiping it off. So my brush has barely any paint and it's just kind of smudging it on. And that's what I'm going for. Just kind of a smudgy top layer, almost like a whitewash. Like if you're whitewashing something, you just really want the colors to come through. And the white is almost just that fun top coat. So I did that to the ears. I'm going to do it just a little bit around, around the eye, top of the eye there. Maybe a little bit underneath as well. That just kind of helps with that furry texture. And all deer are different, so your deer might have more white than mine, and that is absolutely fine. Your deer might have more brown than mine. Also, absolutely fine. All right, now I'm going to dip into straight white. I'm not going to dry brush. I'm just going to fill in this chest area. And I'm going to have the same kind of stroke as I get close to that blue at the bottom. So I'm going to go over the edge and then just lightly lift up so that I can see the edge of that brush stroke. So he just kind of falls off into that background. And now that I've got my white in there, I can blend a little bit around the edges. So if I want that cream color to kind of taper in, I think I might dry brush that a little. So just blending that white out a little bit. And there's no right or wrong way to do this, guys. We're just adding adding colors, blending it out. This guy is whimsical and fun. He's not meant to be realistic. I know I keep saying that, but. And then I am going to take a really light cream, almost white, and I'm going to fill in his little, little chin area here. All right, I'm going to go back into the white, and now we need to add some spots on his body. So I'm going to do, I don't know, my biggest one, maybe right there. Don't overthink it, just, just add some spots. Spots are different on all deer, so... Just add some in. You can vary the shape. Some can be big. Some can be small. And then while I've got my brown out, I am just going to give a little hint of a tail in the back here. Oh, 
All right, so I'm going to get out some black, and I use very little black, to be honest. So I'm going to get out some black, and then we're going to fill in his little nosy and his eyes with black. Because at this point, he still looks kind of creepy without eyes, right? So let's fix that. So again, his nose, if for whatever reason you painted over it, it's just a square. It's not a perfect square, so it can kind of have rounded edges. And I'm going to use a fine round brush so I can get in those eyes. And so, again, if you paint it over it, it's just a really high arch, almost like a rainbow. And then I come back and put a low arch, a low curve right underneath it. So a high rainbow. And I repeat that underneath. All right, it's a little better. He's a little less creepy. We're definitely going to put some glimmer in those eyes <laughs> in a little bit. And then I've got, let's see, I'm going to add just a little more brown. I'm going to mix brown and white. I kind of want just a medium burnt sienna. Not much different than burnt sienna, but just enough that your eye will pick it up. And I'm just going to add a few more spots in here that are just this brown color. Just variation, just something a little different. I, I did that on my samples, so i do that again. All right, so we have filled in the color, the space for the color. I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and I'm going to fill in the color on my butterflies. And to start off with, I am just going uh, straight orange. So I'm using a pyrrol orange. Hi, Jilly. Thank you. He's looking kind of rough now, but he'll end up cute. We'll get there. All right. So I'm going to use a fairly small round brush and I'm just going to fill in the background of my butterflies. So I have one here. We still have more details to go on this deer, but moving on to the butterfly for a little while is going to let some of that dry so we can come in and add finer detail later. Oh my goodness, my glasses just fell apart. I swear, anything that can happen on a live happens. My lens just fell out of my glasses. I didn't touch it, I didn't touch my face, it just randomly popped out. That was weird, okay. So on these butterflies, I'm definitely going to add lots of black edging, but I'm going to fill it in with orange first.
I want them all to have a similar shape, but they don't all have to be the same butterfly. You can have different butterflies. You can have four different butterflies if you want. You can have four different colored butterflies. So there are all kinds of wonderful variations of butterflies and deer and all natural things. So don't stress too much. I'm gonna try moving my camera here. I feel like part of this is out of focus. Let me cover it up. Make it refocus there. I don't know that that's any better, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a pen or a pencil and I'm going to dip it in my white paint. And then I am just going to add two spots in each eye, like a little reflection. And that is really going to make a big difference in making the sky look a little more alive there. And for a while, I'm going to switch to a nice thin detail brush. So the thinnest round brush you have, just a nice small detail brush. Um, I'm going to give him a little eyelash off the edge here. I'm going to come back in and add the side of his mouth here. I need to fix the edge of this nose a little bit. Here we go. So his face looks a little more natural now. I like that. And now I'm going to add in some of these black details on my butterflies. So first, of course, they need their little butterfly bodies. And then there are certain parts of these wings, if you're going to do um, the monarch type butterfly, like I am doing, there are certain parts of the wings that have more black than others. So um, the first noticeable part is down here at the curve of the wing at the bottom here. It's usually a lot thicker with the black. So I'm gonna put that in on all my butterflies. And if you're using heavy bodied paint for this thin line work, it's helpful if you just add a pinch of water. Just thin it out ever so slightly. All right, the second place on the butterfly wings that have a lot more black are the wing tips at the top. So I'm gonna add my thickest black up there. Of course, don't stress too much about the pattern on the butterflies. The focal point of this painting is definitely the summer deer here. We want him to be our spotlight.
And the last thing I'm going to do while I've got this black out is just add maybe a line on the inside of this ear. Just short, um, partial line here and there. And then I'm going to let that go. I'm going to wash off my brush. And then I'm going to come back in with this thin liner and I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to do just a little detailing with this white. So just adding some, some fun highlights here and there. So uh, maybe on the curve, the inside of the ear here, maybe on the outside. Um, where else? Maybe a little highlight above the eye. little glimmer on the nose. You know, there's no right or wrong. We're just kind of adding in a little, little white highlights here and there. I might fix up these dots a little bit wherever I can see some brown through. All right, so I am going to completely dry this. This is going to take me just a moment. I'm going to use a heat gun. You can use a hair dryer. Um, sometimes even if I'm doing in-person paint classes, we just lift it up and down, let the air flow. But I'm going to go ahead and mute so that I don't deafen your ears with my uh, dryer here. All right, so he's fairly dry. Um, and at this point, I'm just gonna add the uh, final lines on my butterflies. And I'm gonna use a Sharpie to do so. Um, it's just easier for me to use a fine pen. If you've got a fine paint pen, ooh, I've got a Posca pen. Maybe I'll use that. Do I have a Posca pen? Was I just making that up? I've got a thick black Posca pen. There it is. I do have a thin Posca pen. So if you've got a Posca pen, that'll work. Um, if you've got a Sharpie, that'll work as well. Just make sure if you're using a Sharpie that your acrylic paint is definitely dry. And then this is where I'm going to add an edge on all the butterfly wings. And you don't really have to be perfect with your design, but what you do on one side, do on the other side. Butterflies are symmetrical from one side to the other. So I'm just adding in some lines and giving them some antenna as well.
Thanks, Jilly. Yeah, the more detail we add, the more he starts to look like a deer. And this is pretty much the final painting. All I'm going to do now is maybe add some finishing touches. So um, wherever there are parts that kind of feel, I don't know, too, too clean or too unnatural, I might just add a little, you know, like hair or fur coming off his head. Just little kind of fur markings and lines. Um, just these extra little details sometimes help it feel a little more natural, break up the color slightly. So whatever you feel like it needs. And your deer is going to need, you know, different things than my deer. They're all different. So don't be afraid to listen to your piece of art. Adjust it however you need to. You can even give them like some little chin hair, some chin fuzz. So that is it. That's all I have for this painting. Uh, if you paint it along with me either tonight or if you're following along on a replay at a later date, definitely share with me. Um, you can always tag me at Painted Cicada. You can do that um, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, or in any of my groups. And speaking of my groups, I do have uh, a group for people to share artwork they create with me or things that they create on their own. Um, it's called the Painted Cicadas Art and Share. So feel free to join me in that group. Share your summer deer with me or anything else you might create. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you've enjoyed this lesson, I do have art lessons available several times a month on all different uh, subject matter and uh, different mediums. So check me out um, at paintedcicada.com. And if you want access to all my classes, uh, I do have a subscription option on Facebook. That's only $4.99. Uh, and that includes everything that I do. So check it out. Thank you for joining. Um, I hope that you'll follow my page, Painted Cicada, and I'll see you on my next demo. Have a great night and a great weekend, everybody.